Disappearance at 4,000 feet altitude. Financial magnate Alfred Lowenstein boarded his private plane with a small group of his employees. It was a clear July day in 1928, and the routine flight from London to his home in Brussels began without a hitch. However, what would happen next inside the cockpit and at almost 4,000 feet would become one of the most puzzling mysteries in history. Alfred Lowenstein was at the time the third richest man in the world, and he knew he had to take care of both his personal and financial security. He took on a team of his most trusted people, six of whom accompanied him aboard the Fokker F7 when the unusual event occurred. Among those on board were Fred Baxter, the billionaire's loyal valet, Arthur Hodgson, his personal secretary. There were also Lowenstein's two stenographers, Eileen Clark and Paula Bedallin, as well as pilot Donald Drew and mechanic Robert Little. The seven passengers on the Fokker F7 settled in on a quick flight to the Belgium capital and were soon flying at 4,000 feet. They departed at 6 p.m. as scheduled. Lowenstein worked in his seat leisurely for the first half of the flight. Then, he got up from his seat and went straight to the small bathroom. He walked past Baxter, who watched him enter the washroom and close the door. Several minutes passed and Lowenstein was still inside the restroom. Baxter checked his watch and noticed that it had been 10 minutes since his boss had entered the cabin. Concerned, he approached the small room and knocked on the door, but got no response. He immediately imagined the worst. The image of his boss collapsed on the bathroom floor as a result of some kind of seizure came into his head. So Baxter began banging on the door wildly, but no sound was heard from behind the door. With the full weight of his body, he lunged against the metal to force the door open. However, he was even more bewildered to find that there was actually no one inside. He himself had seen Lowenstein enter the bathroom minutes before. How was it that his boss was not inside the cabin? The cramped space had no other exit besides the door that he had just forced, nor was there any place to hide in the tiny space. The dimensions of the plane did not leave much room to hide. It was enough to look around to realize that the tycoon was nowhere to be found. There was only one way out of the airplane, and when they noticed that the entrance door to the plane was open, they confirmed what they had feared. The heavy entrance door was swinging wildly in the gust of the air that whipped through it. They knew what they had to do next and diverted the flight path looking for the nearest runway. This way, they would alert the Coast Guard of what had happened. However, pilot Donald Drew opted to land on what he thought was a deserted beach near Dunkirk, but it wasn't 10 minutes later when they had the army surrounding them on the sand. A man had disappeared in the middle of a flight at 4,000 feet, and he was the third richest man on the planet. The public quickly began to question the innocence of the passengers on board, and soon the other six individuals on the plane became suspects. Theories about what had happened inside the Fokker F7 were swift and everyone had their own speculations about the millionaire's whereabouts. Most of the theories implicated one or more of the people on board and tried to explain the reasons why the now suspects might want to get rid of their boss. The incredible stories ranged from hidden resentments and hatreds to elaborate revenge theories. None of them were really taken seriously. They lacked any real semblance and were nothing more than mere speculation. Everyone on board was questioned with the intention of clarifying the facts, but none of the testimonies shed any light on the mysterious disappearance. There was reason to suspect several of them, but nothing was ever found that could directly incriminate any of them. Because of the confined space of the ship, it was impossible that any of them could have killed him without the others seeing him. However, it was thought that it could have been a joint murder where all of them had the same responsibility. Perhaps they were tired of working for Lowenstein and decided to dispose of him in the air, ensuring that there would be no witnesses. Many came to discredit the criminal theories and chose to believe that Alfred Lowenstein's disappearance 
was a mere accident. Perhaps he could have been tired, wanted to go to the bathroom, and opened the wrong door. Many of those who were part of the magician's close circle claimed that the millionaire had been behaving strangely for months. He was more distracted and seemed to be hiding something. Another of the most accepted theories was that Lowenstein was going through problems in his business and his financial state was in decline. It was likely that he had decided to jump out of the plane in mid-flight. However, this theory fell apart after researchers conducted some experiments. At an altitude of only a thousand feet, one of the researchers threw himself against the plane's door to see if it would fall off, but it did not. In fact, the door, which barely opened six inches, was thrown forcefully back into the plane. It was thus verified that it was impossible for Lowenstein to have opened the door by himself and thrown himself into the void. But they concluded that it was feasible for the force of two adult men to open the door. A week after his disappearance, Lowenstein's body was found near Boulogne. An autopsy revealed that he had not died until he fell into the water of the English Channel. All of those on board were arrested and questioned, but there was never any evidence for which they could be arrested. It was concluded that the probable motive for Lowenstein's death was a murder, but it could never be known for certain who murdered the man. It may seem that this mystery is a little out of reach at 4,000 feet, but that doesn't mean the answers will never be found.